Demons are dispatched to stir up trouble every time you try to step into your calling. As you are buffeted, tormented by a messenger of Satan, you're going to start winning those battles that used to win you. Not anymore. Not anymore, devil. I I've learned too much. I've come, to I've come too far. I know now what you used to be able to succeed in no longer has a hold on me. Right? I command these ankles now to turn so that the feet are parallel, toes pointed straight, ankles turn. Are you feeling your ankles? Yeah? Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. I titled today, The Thorn That Bows Down to You. There are some religious ideas, and as a matter of fact, just religious ideas in general, um, about Paul's thorn in the flesh that have caused people to suffer needlessly because they, were, because they believed they were pleasing God in believing a lie. Sometimes, if you have listened to a teaching and you fully believe this teaching, but the teaching is off, you are literally walking with less than what God had provided for you simply because a lack of proper teaching was blocking your ability to receive God's fullness. So indoctrination can blind you, right? It can blind you um, by religious ideas. And it sounds good. It might even sound holy. It, it sounds even religious, right? It sounds good. But the anointing in you will be your strength in weakness. Somebody say amen. The anointing in you will be your strength in weakness and persistence even among the buffeting. Your anointing will come from heaven. And your anointing will come from heaven and hell knowing your name, not people here on earth. Your anointing comes because heaven knows your name. And also hell knows your name, by the way. If you're a threat to his kingdom, people always go, heaven knows my name. And heaven does know your name, right? But hell should know your name too. And they should be fearful. They should be shaking. They should be intimidated because they see the power of God in you. See, intimacy with Jesus and living a consecrated life centered on Christ brings the power of heaven. And it brings the power of heaven into every situation, which means walking in legitimate authority. When we walk in legitimate authority, it literally will bind hell from prevailing against you. Walk in legitimate authority and it binds hell from literally coming against you. So the, perplex the devil. Like, why do you just let him have his way? Perplex, confuse the devil. Perplex him by remaining in the power of God by the Spirit of the Holy Ghost and not your own. That's how you perplex the devil. That's how you confuse his plans. By staying in the power of the Holy Ghost, not your own. Right? So we can turn to Proverbs 24, 3. Because it says, through wisdom a house is built. And by understanding, it is, it is established. We house the Holy Spirit. Our house is being built right now through wisdom. Wisdom of the, of, of the Word of God, not of the world. And not even wisdom that would come from man's way of interpreting something, but it lacks the power of God. So through wisdom, a house is built. And by understanding, it is established. Everyone who has a Bible has the truth. Is that not true? If you have a Bible, you actually have the truth. You have it as a sword. This is a sword. This is the sword, the Word of God. But the Bible won't set you free unless it abides on the inside of you. You may have your sword, but unless it abides on the inside of you, it's not going to set you free. Knowing about something but not embracing it fully is not going to set you free. But when you embrace the truth and you abide in the Word, when you abide in Him, you will be free. You will walk free because you are free. John 8, 31 and 32 says, If you hold to my teaching, then you are really my disciples. Hallelujah. If you hold to the teachings of God, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I have spoken this. I have preached this scripture repeatedly in this last season on purpose. Because we need to get the revelation of this, that if you hold on to and dwell in the teaching of the word, it is the truth of God's word that will set you free. Because there are blinders on too many Christians. 
that think they're free, but they're not because they believe a lie. And the lie will bind you into inactivity and it'll bind you in, in lack. Although the freedom is available. It's available in God's word. It's available to us. So turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians because this is going to be our main text here today, 2 Corinthians 12. Because Paul boasted in his infirmities. So 2 Corinthians 12 and in verse 9. And this is the word of the Lord. And he says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest on me. I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me, right? That word infirmities, when you look up that word infirmities, well, when you look at that word, just at sight, you think, oh, infirmities, sickness, because many times the word infirmities means sickness. But when you do a word study on that specific word here in this part of the scripture, it doesn't mean sickness. It means weakness. Weakness, not sickness. Let's reread it with the word weakness there. My grace is sufficient for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather rejoice in my weakness uh, that the power of Christ may rest on me. See, our weakness is actually strength in Christ. So it turns to strength in Christ, right? Because it's his strength that, that becomes our strength. But when we walk in weakness, like in other words, when we walk in ourselves realizing that it's Christ in me, the hope of glory, it is Christ in me that's giving me strength, not my own natural abilities, not my own natural skill set or giftings or any of that, knowledge or achievements, none of that. It is uh, the strength of God, the power of God that we want to flow through us. So that's why we can say in our weakness, we're strong. We're strong in him. So. Paul was not saying that he would glory in sickness because that is a teaching out there. Oh, I'm going to glory in my sickness. I'm just going to praise God in my sickness. Like we praise God in everything. But there are teachings that say, well, Paul was boasting about his sickness, so we should do. That's a lie. Paul was not saying that he would glory in his sickness, but he but he will glory in his ability to control the situation, to allow the anointing to come upon him. He would glory in the fact that the anointing of God comes upon us when we realize in ourselves we're weak. It's not talking about a physical sickness. We're going we're gonna to get deeper into this, but I want to first make sure we're following right now. It's, he was referring to, because he knew, he knew, he had a revelation of this, and he was a very intelligent man, very, he was a studied man, but he came to the point in his life when he realized it's all rubbish. He came to a point in his life when he realized all of that is, is good, it serves a point, it serves a purpose for it, but in my weakness is when I'm strong in Christ. It is Christ in me, the hope of glory that amounts to anything, not my achievements, right? So Paul, many believe that Paul's thorn in his side was a sickness sent by God, okay? But Paul's thorn in his side, first of all, was not a sickness. Secondly, it was not sent from God. If you believe that God sent you that sickness, then why would you be going against the will of God to pray against it? If you believe that God sent you this sickness to teach you a lesson, then why would you pray to be healed? Why would you pray against it? Why would you resist? Why would you go against God? Because see, God didn't give that to you. And God, this thorn that he's referring to here was not a sickness. People don't put up resistance when they think that it might be the will of God, right? We, if you think something is the will of God, are you gonna, are you gonna put up resistance? No, because you want the will of God, right? So if you think something is the will of God, you're not going to resist that thing. You're gonna go along with it. So, but demons were dispatched, and I need you to hear this with, the, with your understanding, your, you know, the, your spiritual eyes, okay, and, and spiritual ears, discernment. 
demons were dispatched to stir up trouble. Demons were dispatched to stir up trouble everywhere Paul preached. Demons are dispatched to stir up trouble every time you try to step into your calling. Demons are dispatched every time you make that commitment that you are going to serve God no matter what it costs. Demons are dispatched. That's why hell needs to know your name. Hell needs to know your name and hell needs to know that you're not going to back down. Because the word of God stands true forever. Amen. So James 4, 7, we says we are to submit to God. We are to resist the devil. And that when we do that, what happens? Yeah, he, he must flee from us, right? He has to flee. So what was the thorn in Paul's side? In 2 Corinthians 12, but verse 7. And least I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of revelations. A thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me. Least I be exalted above measure. Paul had a messenger of Satan. Not a messenger of God. He had a messenger of Satan. Let every ear hear right now. Let any false form of religion be removed in the name of Jesus. Let truth right now come and settle within you. Let every wrong teaching be dismissed right now and loosen the strongholds on your mind in Jesus' name. Paul had a messenger of Satan sent to buffet him. What is to buffet? It's to torment. There was an assignment of the enemy every time he tried to step into the will of God that was sent to try to torment him. And you thought, why is this still happening? Why am I still de dealing with the same demon? Welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. This is exactly how you know you're walking in the right standing with God. Of course, you're heart is right you're not in sin but just because you're being tormented as something comes against you and you continue to stand against it doesn't mean well how come I still haven't gained victory over this maybe you need to keep on keeping on maybe it's that spirit that's tormenting you the spirit that's that's this buffeting you just like just like he spoke of Paul spoke of right? to buffet to torment means to strike with a clenched fist sounds like somebody's trying trying to beat somebody up I think we need to start tormenting the enemy all right I think we need to buffet the enemy right because to torment or to buffet means to strike with a clenched fist not only that it's a steady buffeting to keep the revelation of God from being preached that's why sometimes when somebody asks you for prayer and you're at church there's a holy boldness that comes upon you and you pray like nobody's business but then you get into a situation where maybe it's family members that knew you from when you were three years old and you were raised up in that and now you're a Christian and you're an on fire Christian but somebody you were in that group and they said I want you to pray and all of a sudden you forgot exactly how to pray you forgot everything. You had nothing coming forth out of you. It's like the spirit of intimidation came upon you and you just couldn't do the will of God because there was a spirit that was sent to shut you up, came to torment you, came to shut you up. And you felt so bad. You're like, man, I'm a horrible Christian. When am I going to learn? And you fought the wrong battle. You should have said, devil, get behind me. I see your work. I see what you're doing familiar spirits they try to come against you and sometimes without you even knowing it and sometimes they do succeed but God because I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning and they're not going to keep on having victory a messenger of Satan what's a messenger an angel fallen angel in this case a messenger in this case a fallen like a demon a demon spirit Hebrews 1, 13 and 14, it says, But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Say, my enemies are my, going to be my footstool. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation? We have angels of God. We have angels that are coming straight from the pit. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. It's to Acts 13, verse 49. It says, And the word of the Lord was being spread. Wow, so Paul, you had this moment here, this, this time where that you were being buffeted by this tormenting spirit. And let me tell you, as you are buffeted, tormented by a messenger of Satan, you're going to start winning those battles that used to win you.
you're gonna start recognizing those battles and say, no, you don't, devil. Uh, no, you don't, not anymore. Not anymore, devil. I I've learned too much. I've, came I've come too far. I know now what you used to be able to succeed in no longer has a hold on me. So we move from this and you think, oh, it should be done. The devil should just be completely silent. No, church. That's why even when Jesus was in, um, when he was being baptized and, and, and when he was in the Jordan River and, and, and John the Baptist baptized him and, and the enemy came to torment him, right? Jesus continued to stand on the word. But what did that angel that was a, it was an angel of light, it was a tormentor. He came and he said, what? that he's going to go, but he would come back at a more opportune time. I mean, if he did this to Jesus, why are you shocked when the enemy keeps on knocking on the door? You just need to keep on punching him in the face. You, you just need to kick him. You just need to stomp on him. You need to not allow him, right? He's like, oh, the enemy just keeps on. Well, then keep on yourself. So in Acts 13, that, that buffeting spirit continued. It says in verse 49, and the word of the Lord was being, was being spread. Thank God. No matter what, you keep on standing firm. And, and the message of God is going to be preached through you. Your families will start to see, wow, they, she is different. She really is crazy. He is different. He really is crazy. We're crazy for Jesus. So in the word of the Lord being spread throughout all the region. But the Jews stirred up the devout and prominent women and the chief men of the city raised up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. But they shook off the dust from their feet against them. He said, really, I see your work, devil, but you're not going to slow down the gospel. You're not going to slow down my calling. You're not going to stop the will of God from being done in my life. I'm just going to shake it off. I'm just going to walk on territory that you thought you were going to prevail against me. I'm going to walk on that territory. I'm going to claim it as mine in Jesus' name. And that's a good thing that God has designed it like this because let me tell you, if he didn't, I think, I think a few people might get a little prideful in themselves thinking they got all this power and they think that power came from them. There would be so much pride, but God knowing all things doesn't leave us. He doesn't tell us, I want you to do this, this amazing thing, and then not give us the tools to do, that, to do so and be successful at it. So when you stand boldly for Christ and persecution comes, but the Lord will deliver you out of them all. And this is something you need to remember. You stand boldly for Christ. Sometimes, you know, messengers of Satan, tormenting, buffeting spirits, they just have that clenched fist. And it's like one thing after another. It's like your children are being, you know, hit. Your finances are being hit. Your health is being hit. You're, now you're fighting and you're, you know, just one. And you're just looking around and you're just going, really? From every direction? Really? Okay, that's that clenched fist just coming, that messenger of Satan just coming with that clenched fist. But we have the authority of God. We recognize where it comes from. We recognize that the Lord will deliver you out of them all. That scripture is 2 Timothy 3, 10 and 11. It says, but you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, which happened to me at Antioch. He says, at Iconium and Lystria, what persecutions I endured. But out of all of them, the Lord has delivered me. So he's saying, listen, I know how hard it can be. And I know the attacks and they come from every direction. But the Lord is your deliverer. The Lord will deliver you out of them all. But also you're going to stand in rightful authority and do James 4, 7, which says you're going to submit to God and then you're going to resist the devil. And then you're going to know that that devil has to flee from you. That devil is fleeing from you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. There's one other thing I want to share with you. That was the message. This is something that I saw on social media. Now, I need to bring this up to your attention as well because this is the church that God has, has entrusted me to lead. Avatars, this new app called Lens App. Now, I'm aware not all of you are social media people, and so you may not know even about this, but I still need you to know because it's important because we need to know the battles that are out there and how to wage war, a good warfare. So the church needs discernment. To, and this is what I wrote. I wrote this out. I posted this on social media. I said, to Christian leaders who should know better, why would you willingly align yourself with Hindu spirits that literally mean the appearance of goddesses and deities of spirits on earth? Why would you willingly align yourself with this? Because I saw 
this, this app, avatars, and then this Lenza app, where they take their pictures that they've submitted, and they have then given them back, this app then will give back to you these different renditions of you based on what you've given them. Don't ever come into agreement with the demon. Don't ever give them an open door. Don't ever be in partnership and shake hands and sit here, let me give you this. The only thing you should give him is a slap in the face. The only thing you should give him is, is stomping on his parade. Don't ever come into partnership with the devil. So when you give them this, these pictures of yourself, they give you back these renditions of yourself, different, different looks, if you will. These different looks, I mean, you just have to look at them. Just church, open your eyes. Just look at what you're looking at, will you? And have some, have a spiritual backbone. So they're they're demonic. They're they're of different creatures and critters. And some of them, some of them look really eerie. They have that tone of magic to them. They're they're just fairies and just other lands and other places. But it's you. Your face that you've submitted to, opened yourself up to. And by the way, the reason that I was so disturbed about this is because the ministries that were doing this were deliverance ministries. Well-known deliverance ministries that have hundreds of thousands of followers. And one of the deliverance ministries that was doing, that has done this, not only did she do it, her husband did it, and so did her only daughter. All of them. You can go to all their profile, it's all there. And on her page and on her, this Lenza app, a, you can see all the comments. So I looked at one of the comments and it's some, some man that calls himself a prophet. And, and I don't know this person, but he too has over 100,000 followers. That means a lot of influence, right? But are we influencing people for God? Or are we influencing people right into the devil's territory? Because if God's going to give you that much influence and you're not going to use it right, woe unto you. So, so the comment on his his comment to her page was um, and just generally speaking he said basically that he had done it too but he didn't have enough courage to post those pictures but now that he sees her doing it now that he's going to go ahead therefore and post them and, and I'm just going wow like okay so you had a check in your spirit obviously when you when you first saw this but you went ahead curiosity got the better of you you still went ahead and did it but then you didn't want to let the whole world know that you were kind of walking in compromise but in, but then when somebody that you esteemed did it then you la allowed them to take you and to go ahead and just go and post it so that everybody can be slimed and I've heard seen more than one person say oh, I wasn't sure about that but since you're doing it I'm gonna do it too and see, that's the problem with these things. If it's wrong, it's wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And if you're a Christian leader and you're doing this, and I put on there, you need to repent, you need deliverance. The deliverance minister needs deliverance because there's an open door right there of deception. Let me just re read this because some of you don't know yet even what I'm talking about. What is an lenza? What is an avatar? The avatar originated from the Hindu religion, which means a person who is a divine incarnation, a, mess a, a messiah or world teaching of the highest order. An avatar literally means a descent. So the term refers to a soul who had been freed from delusion and is sent by the will of the gods back into manifested existence to help others. In essence, this is the definition of reincarnation. Having an avatar of yourself is unbiblical and it unites you with the deception of the demonic world. So the latest I, which I've seen is this Lenza app. Because an avatar is not, not new, that they've had that for years, and I spoke out about that three or four years ago when I first saw it online. There's no way I would do that. I mean, just discernment in and of itself, I look at that, I'm like, why would you do that, you know? And so then the Lenza, Lenza app is, is a slightly different and is about 10 days, 12 days old at this point in time. But still, when I saw it, I'm like, why, does, why are they not seeing this? Why are people that, you know, have deliverance ministries that love God because deception runs rampant, right? We need to always safeguard our, our hearts, staying in the word, making sure our hearts don't get prideful, making sure our hearts are, are not going to walk into what God says is desperately wicked, right? So we need to guard our heart. We need to live holy to before the Lord. Uh, Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart of a man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So by suppressing the truth of God, people go after gods of their own making. And, you know, trying to become a god, justifying their own 
their own immoral and, and rebellious behavior. So the Lenza app uses artificial intelligence to produce magic avatars, images of you made to look like different spirits of divine descent. Are you kidding me right now? You maybe just saw an app and go, oh, that's cute. I wonder what I would look like with all, you know, with the... No, maybe research what it is if, if, if you didn't have that inner witness saying don't do it. Maybe research some things before you just do everything that is available to you. It's no different from people go, oh, you know what, you're, you're, I don't think they call it fortune for the day because I think most Christians would be alerted to this, but, but it's still the same idea where it's like, oh, well, this is what this day is for me. I, what? This day for me is that I will rejoice in the Lord my God. Right? This day belongs to the Lord. Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. What? You don't need. And, you, and it's not just that you don't need. You don't want to partner with stuff like that. It, this Christianity should not be like a fortune cookie. It should not be like your horoscope. You go and you read. You know, if you're doing any of these practices, I don't care how wide, how big or small. You go, but I'm not going to fortune. To, but you're doing apps like this that a push of a button and here's, your, here's, here's what your day is going to be. Tell me that that is not playing with fire. And tell me that if you play with fire, you will not be burned. Right? So we can't do these kinds of things. We have to have spiritual discernment. We have to have this understanding that if we're biblical, Bible-believing Christians, right? And if we have done anything like this, using these avatars, using this lens app, we need to repent. And we need to ask God to forgive us. And we need to get some deliverance. Because the devil never comes to play fair. He never comes to play fair. So I shared that with, you know, I shared that on Tuesday night. And, you know, a lot of people didn't know about it. I think a couple did. But a lot of people didn't know because it is very, fairly new. But when the Lord said to me, I want you to speak out on this, I'm like, okay, no problem. Because you know what? When you're convicted of something, then you need to speak. Because there are people that will hear. And I've had many people online, they've commented and they said I had a check about it I'm so glad I didn't do it and there was somebody's comment that said I had a check I almost did it because a well-known ministry had did it had has also done it and but I'm so glad that I waited the Holy Spirit had me wait then I read your post and I realized thank God I didn't do it our lives, people are watching our lives, right? They're, they're watching us. People are watching our walk. And we want to lead them to Christ and not away from Christ. If you don't know, if you have a check in your spirit, you may not know, you may not have that strong, fiery passion against it, but you have a check. That's enough. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. You can research, great. You can find out, great. But don't bypass the checks that God gives us. They're meant for our protection.